In this section, we're going to cover jumping up and down curbs. And we're going to cover two different methods. One is the one step or the continuous method of moving along and jumping over the curb without stopping. This is used mostly by paraplegics. And the second method, we'll just call it the two-step method, where you pull up to the curb, pull a wheelie, stop, back up, and then continue forward, getting your momentum up again and going over the curb. And this method is used basically by quadriplegics who are just starting out or using projections. So now that you've practiced jumping over the cracks in the sidewalk or lines in the linoleum, whatever it happens to be, the next step is to jump up the curb. And for that, you better roll up slowly. You see the curb between your toes. You can see my front end is only a few inches away from the curb. You're reaching way back to this giant stride, picking the chair up, and you want to land those wheels on top of the sidewalk before your back wheel hits. So you have a very small window of opportunity of about eight inches before that wheel contacts the thing. And now, notice where my hands are. They're in front of the axles, ready to drive all that weight forward and up over the hill. So let's look at it and put it all together in one smooth little thing. You don't need a lot of speed here. Most of it's just timing, and you're on top of the curb. The first method of getting off curbs that I teach is going down backwards. You basically pull up parallel to the back end with both wheels are going to fall off at the same time. The only mortal sin is stopping. Do not stop. Just fall backwards and let the chair roll backwards. All right? If you need to stop, if you're coming off and you do need to stop, just stop one wheel and let the chair turn around. If you stop both wheels while you're in a wheelie, you're most likely to fall over backwards. Uh, so just stop one wheel at a time if you do have to stop. But otherwise, just let the chair roll off backwards and you'll be fine, keeping your weight to the forward end of the chair. So let's look at jumping up again. You want to be able to roll up right about here, leaning back, putting your weight back, and then pulling it over and finishing the job. And then falling off backwards. So it should be a very easy, natural thing, coming up to the curb. All right. One thing, as a therapist, if you're trying to diagnose what's going on, one thing that's very diagnostic, if you hit the wheels, your back wheels, on the curb before your front end. Now watch my feet. You'll see that they fly forward when I do this jump. And that, when you see the feet going forward like that, it's very diagnostic of your back wheels hitting before the front wheels are down on the curb. And that slams your front end down and your feet go flying off. So that's one little thing to remember if you're watching, trying to figure out what's going on. Meg, could you come spot me? Stand. All right. And you'll put, you'll put one hand in front and one behind. OK. When, when you're teaching this, if you're spotting, you want to be able to start. If somebody hits the curb and bends forward, if they have on a body brace, then it's going to really cut into them. So you as a therapist will be able to stop them from falling forward. Or if they fall backwards with too much wheelie, you can catch them. So those are the two things you'll be looking for when you're spotting. You ready? Yeah. Oh. Nope, it's fine. So you can see the feet off there. All right, and there I just made it. So when you see the front end bounce up again, you know you don't have just enough wheelie. OK. One of the ways of getting off of curbs, it's called going off a curb in a wheelie. But I don't want you up here in a wheelie balancing and then going off the curb. A very dangerous thing to do. The best way to teach this is to pull a very small wheelie. You're going to feel 
the chair on your back, knowing that you've picked it up, but then don't pick it up very high. Now, the reason for this is when you land on the ground, when you started, the bottom of your tire, which was here, has now been pushed eight inches forward in just this two and a half inch drop. So that gives you quite a push behind you. And what you'll find is when you do that, the chair is pushed out from underneath you. So if you're balancing on a curb and then you jump off, you're going to find that that, whoa, it's pushing you forward quite a bit. And you have to save yourself from falling over backwards. A bigger curb will actually push you even more. So don't do that. You might fall over, break your neck on the curbstone. Then you'll be even more trouble. <laughs> so let's put all these elements together and see how simple it should look. Very safe, not a big deal. It's mostly timing. Another way to teach getting off of curbs besides going backwards and forwards is going off sideways. And this is something you don't use very often, but sometimes you have a case of beer in your lap and you don't want to shake it all up. Or if you're out in the woods and going over tree roots where you can't go off evenly, you don't get to pick how you're going to go off it. And that's going off on an angle. And basically, you can put your front wheel off the curb, shifting your weight to the uphill side, and then letting your back wheel slide off the curb slowly. And then you come down off the curb. Curbs, it's one thing to jump over, the little wooden curb we demonstrated on. It's quite another thing that one that's in the real world and won't move. But not a big deal at all. Just pick your shot, do things right, and you should be all set. Keep your weight back on the softer surfaces. Coming up to it, keep yourself rolling, not a problem. 